There was a time nearly 200 years ago when a group of people living in the outer wilderness of New England decided that they would like their grammar school to become a college. They had one building, no money, but a desire and a willingness to tax themselves, to give, and that college became Middlebury College. Middlebury College is today what it has always been, a quiet haven for the individual human spirit to study, contemplate, write, practice, dream, prepare, compete, and excel. Since its founding, the college has been a special place, purposely located, carefully situated from all that would distract the mind from its pursuit of understanding. Yet while we seek detachment from the more mundane cares of the world, the world and its demands refuse to be silent. Middlebury College today is facing some of the greatest challenges of its history. The vision that brought us to this point has succeeded beyond anyone's dreams. But along with that success come unprecedented claims on our resources. Long ago, provision was made for today's needs. Now the time has come again to provide for the future. It's our time. Where once we were a regional institution serving students from a few states, we now find ourselves in a leadership position on an international scale. Our arena is no longer New England, or even the United States, but rather the world. Some of our programs, such as the language schools and the Breadloaf Writers Conference, attract the attention of the world's press and feature participants of international stature. Our students are no longer just those who live nearby, or only those who can afford it. They are promising students from all over the globe, whose academic prowess could ensure a welcome at any of the great universities. Excellence has been a priority at Middlebury since its founding. Indeed, we will be satisfied with nothing less. But maintaining such a standard in the late 20th century has engaged us in a struggle against ever-increasing costs. Middlebury College, along with many other first-rate institutions in the United States, is right now locked in a competition for quality. Good students with far-ranging intellects are the most visible signs of a college's academic credentials. We are recruiting such students more vigorously and more widely than ever before. We must be able to continue to offer admission to and enroll every qualified student, regardless of his or her ability to pay. This means making sizable increases in our scholarship endowment. People have a really deep attachment to this place. There's no way I would be here right now if it weren't for my scholarship aid, and I'm really thankful for it. First, they decide in admissions who they want to admit, and after that, they determine who needs what kind of aid. It really is a fair process. It just allows everyone to have an equal shot at coming here. If this is more positive, the light will go out because this will be a negative number in the diagonal conductor. Why don't we leave other quiet views so we catch up how they felt it went? Your second position before you promenade the whole We really don't even need pitch because it's on pitch. The Atta. The bedrock of any first class institution of higher education is not its history or the beauty of its campus or the size of its endowment. It lies rather in the teaching skills of its faculty. Here, Middlebury has been fortunate. Generations of students have come and gone with virtually universal praise for the faculty who guided them through the mysteries of the periodic table, the glories of an ode by Keats, the complexities of the Napoleonic campaigns. Teaching is what I like doing. Some people resent it. Oh, here come the students. What an interruption to our work. I feel this. Here come the students. Here's somebody I can go to work with and try to bring out. I have students who I can have in my house for classes. I have section meetings in my advanced courses in my living room around the fireplace. There's a whole kind of atmosphere, a kind of way of teaching that I feel comfortable with that I can do in a place like this that I could not do in even a very good university. America is at the brink of a crisis in teaching that will adversely affect Middlebury and indeed all institutions of higher education. 
the number of first-rate teacher scholars is shrinking. And all the best colleges and universities in the country are vying for them. We must make Middlebury an even more attractive career choice for top-ranking, experienced teachers and promising young instructors. Faculty salaries at Middlebury must increase to keep pace with national standards. And equally important, the size of the faculty must increase. This will do more than simply increase the amount of time a teacher spends with each student. It will enhance a teacher's professional growth. It will mean more time for research, more time to write, more time to reflect and explore, more time to deepen one's knowledge in scholarly pursuits. The larger we make the faculty, the more we are going to make it possible for professors to go on leave. Being able to take the time off is very valuable. Being able to think about the kinds of things you teach, being able to think about the kinds of writing you do, to be able to think about how one teaches, it's very good. There are other immediate needs this capital campaign will meet. For example, the campus itself. The physical and intellectual environments of Middlebury are interconnected. The quality of one depends on the quality of the other. The physical plant requires some immediate additions and renovations to keep pace with other improvements, from a new dormitory to an arts complex to faculty offices. This is not a campaign to build buildings. It's a campaign for the academic mission of the college, of which buildings are a part. It is certainly easier to attract outstanding students and faculty when you have outstanding facilities. We have completed renovations of the College Street School, renamed it Alexander Twilight Hall to provide additional classroom and office space. We have just opened the North Dormitory, which both provides uh, modern and comfortable housing for 133 students and allows us systematically to renovate each of our other dormitories uh, according to a well-planned sequence. We are now in the rather advanced stages of planning for the conversion of Voter Hall into a campus-wide computer center and the dramatic expansion of student activity space in a renovated and expanded Proctor Hall. Finally, and perhaps most ambitiously, we are looking to a dramatic expansion of our performing and visual arts facilities, which will bring to campus artists and performers of international distinction. When young Melville Painter died, he was Middlebury's pride, a sturdy pioneer without despair. As a good steward of the funds entrusted to its care, Middlebury College is without peer. Our endowment performance is excellent. Our planned maintenance programs are practical and cost-effective. The college is a well-managed, forward-thinking organization. It has always been so. That we are enjoying the benefits of such stewardship today is a legacy from prior generations who saw beyond their own needs and planned for ours. The issues were different, but the vision, the urgency, is the same. Now, it's our time. All of us at Middlebury benefit from the generosity of many generations. Today, Middlebury College faces the most extraordinary challenge in its history. We have entered upon a $60 million capital fund drive called the Campaign for Middlebury. The challenges that lie before us in raising the remainder of the money are perhaps even more formidable than those we have already met in moving two-thirds of the way to our goal. The kinds of opportunities that can be addressed focus on people, on students, on faculty, and on the environment in which they can live and work. I'm genuinely confident that everyone at Middlebury understands the obligations that come to each generation to carry on that which they have inherited and leave it better and, if at all possible, more prosperous and more capable of addressing the future than when they first found it. It is our turn. This is our time. <laughs>